Answer me this. If you're going to buy a house, what are you looking for? The open plan living, the family room, or an ensuite bathroom. So you can stay in there, read jokes for as long as you want without being interrupted? Or do you want them all, and even more? How about beauty and architectural design combined? Like this. And this. Um, maybe not that. But this. Oh wait, you need a display house to preview first. But do you ever wonder who came up with those ideas? They all came from a 60-year-old company called Glenville. In 1955, Michael Warson escaped the war and arrived in Melbourne, Australia. Living with his sister, he soon got a job as a surveyor. I think it was about a year and a half of that. Dad was getting really, really frustrated. He said, look, I can't stand it. They're not doing anything. One evening, Michael was sitting at the table playing bridge with his Polish migrant friends. He told his friends that he wanted to leave. A guy by the name of Adam said to him, look, why don't you become a builder? And I'll help you. They started building homes, and they built hundreds of homes. What was really unique at the time was that he wanted to build multiple homes at once. Glenville got reputation for its innovation. When we came to Australia, we couldn't remember the streets because they all looked the same with the little houses. He said, we buy this huge blocks of land, we'll buy and we'll build homes. Nice homes, modern homes. 48 years ago, the Optum family purchased their Glenville home in Mount Waverley in 1969. Mum and Dad were both proud of the fact they had a Glenville home. They were migrants, you know, it was the big migrant dream to eventually, you know, own their own homes. They always liked the latest and greatest. This house appealed to them because they were always keen to have something modern and different. And it was a perfect house for entertaining people. For years, our families come here to celebrate everything. Glenville opened a physical display home in 1960, which had never been done in the industry. And after a time, he was the first to build a high-rise in St Gilda Road. Parkside was 24 years ahead of the market when it was built in 1983. And then he built another high-rise. <laughs> in 1985, Michael's son Len joined the Glenville team. I think I was about 13. I went to Dad's office during school holidays to sit there and draw and whatever I do. And I remember coming home and saying to Mum, when I grow up, I want to do what Dad does. And she goes, why? And I said, because he doesn't do anything all day. He just sits at his desk and screams at people. Glenville kept innovating. Len turned Glenville into Australia's first architecturally designed driven home builder. I opened up a 17 house display centre in Cathy's Lane, Monturner. And that was the first change of the industry to architectural housing. People said I would fail, but it was incredibly successful. From Len's direction at the start is that we're not there just to build a house and make money out of it and move on. His mind works in a very interesting way. With Len, I think um, he has always erred on the side of being bold, but smart about being bold, so calculated risk taking. My whole attitude to, to outcomes is what I call a blank sheet of paper. When you come into a meeting, leave what everybody else does, leave it behind. Leave it at the door, don't bring it in. The Glenville team kept pushing boundaries. They invest in new ways of living that leave other companies behind. Now developing Yarra Bend in Alphington, Melbourne, which has been identified as the world's most livable suburb by 2025. Yarra Bend is sort of like a dream job. I think we're here to find the way we live. It's been a game changer to the industry. We've already seen on a world scale people incorporate Tesla power walls. So technology, sustainability, all those things that we've elevated make it incredibly special. I'd never known him to be creative at home. He's, he was my dad. And then seeing him in this work context was so interesting. He builds homes that will live in the future. I mean, I'm practical. I get to a certain point and I think, no, that can't be done. Whereas he thinks, well, it can be done. We just need to figure out how it can be done and who can do it. One of the things that I really enjoyed about Glenville was embracing technology, but also embracing art. Len's love of art helped him find Roan, who got involved bringing street art into Yarra Bend. Len came to my 2016 exhibition. I said, look, why don't you go and paint at Yarra Bend? Like, it doesn't worry about the how, it just worries about the vision. It kind of makes me rethink and say, well, just think of the concept. Lenny had the different ideas, you know, every generation has different ideas. He actually made it into something completely different. They're continually being innovative with their designs, whether it's projects or retail. Um, and I think that's probably the attraction of Glenville. Doesn't try and conform and copy what everybody else does, he likes to be the leader. He likes to change his logos quite regularly. 
it drives me insane. Only because I actually look after all the site uniforms for the um, site managers when we had the 50th anniversary. My husband did the cake and we managed to get all the logos put on that cake. We've always endeavoured to do is to create what I call emotional architecture. The brief is, when you walk into the front of your house, what do you want to feel? It's really sentimental seeing people grow up in a house that you've created. It's, it's a pretty special experience. Emotional intelligence is underpins everything we do, and I think that's what differentiates us in a way. I've met multi-generational Glenville buyers, a bit like buying a Mercedes or something generationally. And even the young kids today, when they go and so I'm buying an apartment or something from Glenville. Have you heard of Glenville? Because they're parents. They're parents, of course, they're fantastic. Yeah.